But there's a co question from Christine Cobbler. She wants to know how long does it take from pushing the button to actually cooking? Like how long does it take to print a steak right now? Yes, or small bits like this one. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but uh, um, you yep, see, okay. small pieces like four skewer pieces that we're going to cook first. Uh, this takes five minutes, uh, and the big ones it can take up an hour, forty minutes right now. So we are every day improving the speed because of the butters. It, Matters so much. Today we want to do something that is a uh, uh, very, very precise in terms of uh, uh, the thermal microstructure. So it's about half an hour. This piece. We are going slow, uh, very slow on purpose because we want it to be ready for when it was time to put it on the pan. So we just slow it down so that it can uh, finish to print right before you, you cook it. Jane Jane Fryman wants to know: Does it cook the same as traditional meat? Like, is it? I'm wondering how long it takes to cook. Is it? Is it? Is this similar? Yeah, we, we see it's uh, actually it's composed of ingredients that uh, allow to act similar to a piece of meat when you cook it. So, in particular, uh, this uh, prototype, the one that we are cooking first, it's a mixture of a yellow bean protein and rice protein extracts. Then you have uh, this uh, natural color, which is a, a beetroot juice extract that allows uh, in this specific microstructure, uh, you keep the color in, inside without the need of making cellulose in this uh, specific case, and you are able to release the color and, uh, and transform it into the color, which is a very look looking very much like a piece of, uh, of meat when you cook. So uh, we are warming up the pan, but you will see that it looks like a piece of normal meat. I think uh, it's interesting to say that uh, we are doing this uh, live streaming also from a culinary school. So uh, we have, uh, uh, have chefs that uh, cook this in different ways, into the oven, into the pan. We have done uh, different strange uh, tests also in microwaves, etc. But if you cook it on a pan, you can say for sure it already um, uh, cooks like meat. And also in the oven, we have seen very good results already. Joe Berger asks, do the layers of fibers tend to separate during the cooking process? No, no, no. We will see right now. Um, we will see that they don't separate and we cut it. We can do a zoom and we see that the layers don't separate. If we stand uh, together, you can see that it's a single piece when you print it, when you finish printing and when you cook it. So, no. The answer is you have uh, a connection between the fibers, which is a physical connection uh, in which you have so many points of contact, uh, topographical points of contact, which means that you have several uh, several uh, chemistry and, uh, and physical uh, connections in between uh, the molecules inside of each one of the fibers and also within the fibers. We call it intermolecular connections and uh, you can have a physical connection if you have a bundle of, or a group of, uh, of fibers, uh, you create a net. And uh, when you create a net, it's uh, very interesting because uh, uh, when you apply a uh, force, so if you, for example, uh, apply a force to a single part of the structure, you will see that the whole structure uh, is helping, like if it was a fishing net, is helping uh, the structure to withstand the stress. So this is very typical of, uh, of, uh, of uh, native, oh. native uh, fishes and organs. If you also see how the color is changing, Yeah, we can see if we do a zoom here, uh, that the color is changing on the cooking process. So, um, yeah, we then uh, we are turning it around, we're cooking as if it was a normal piece of meat, then we're putting it here, we are cutting, and you see that's the little juice extract in this case. It's mixed with natural aromas. We are working with the several providers, so the mixture here is, as I mentioned, it's very similar to a piece of meat, specifically at our whole muscle cuts. In this specific case, we have around 65-70% of water, we have around 25% of protein, we have around 12-15% of uh, fat, of course everything is plant-based. Plant-based, algae-based, or bacteria-based, because in some prototypes we use algae fibers, in other prototypes we have been using some, uh, some bacteria-based uh, ingredients, and we are testing this is a very good uh, thing of deliberately to do the prototyping at small scale. And uh, apart from protein uh, fibers, such as algae fibers, uh, water and and, uh, and oil what we have is natural aromas and natural uh, and natural colorants such as people yep.
I'm, I'm realizing the shortcomings of virtual events. You can't smell the demo um, and you can't taste it. So that's a, when they can figure that out, that'll be great. Uh, Susan Bowen actually asked about the aroma. And I was thinking the same thing. Like, what does it, I think you mentioned it does smell somewhere. What is it smelling like meat aroma? And if it is, how are you achieving that? Yeah, it smells like the meat aroma. And uh, I mean, we partner with amazing uh, big companies that have been working hundreds of years in uh, fermentation technology to get the natural aromas. So if you choose the right protein, or if the protein has some functionality, yeah, a lot of functionality actually, but uh, you need also to work with experts in the field. So in this specific case, we have been using a uh, ingredients which are natural aromas. It's about 1% of it, so uh, less than 2% for sure. And uh, what we work is work with great providers that have been working on this for many, many years. So if you can keep ask, uh, asking me questions, but we will cut and show how it looks internally. So if we can have a zoom here, I think, uh, yeah, perfect. So when you cut it, all right, yeah, we put it here so that uh, uh, I think that if we do a zoom here, yeah, okay, but uh, it looks like, uh, as you have seen before the presentation, it looks like a piece of meat with micro elements inside, which are the microfibers. So if uh, we, well, you cannot see a smell here, but it smells like meat, and it looks like meat that you can have on the outside um, the, the many other action, and on the inside, you can keep if you want some more color, some more fat. So this is depending on the cooking process and the breathing process. Okay, so we have a lot of questions. So do you mind, you want me to just keep shooting them while you're kind of showing off the meat? Um, one of them, has, one, this is actually an interesting question. Um, how does a marinade perform? So like, you know, obviously when you're cooking with uh, beef, for example, or pork, you're, oftentimes you're, you're preparing it day before or hours before and you might marinate it. Um, you might soak it. How does this, do, how does this compare? Can you do, can you treat it similarly as regular meat or does it, it treat it differently when you're adding different flavors and sauces? Yeah, in this specific case, we didn't add any spice because we wanted to show that the very short list of ingredients. I think this one has around five or six uh, ingredients. It's a natural before. And um, what you can do is marinate, of course. Actually, when I talked to Ferrara, the other first thing is that he said, if you have this microstructure and you marinate it, you can really get all the, uh, all the flavor in the inside, which means that uh, because it's microstructure, the internal network can, uh, um, the internal network can retain um, the aromas. So it's not just on the surface, you know, it's very typical of, for example, extrusion, where you get on the surface um, um, fibers that are connected to the marinating, uh, the marination, but inside, you cannot get in the inside because it's not microporous. While in this specific case, you have micro elements and they, um, the aromas, the ingredients can go within the structure. So that's why this is the same strategy that we're using is cell-based meat where we get the animal cells inside okay. the structure. Hey, Giuseppe, can, can you do a show, close up of the printer um, and, and maybe yeah. mention, so we see the, I see the extruder. It looks like maybe there's one container. Are you extruding different, um, different materials to kind of give the, the different kind of elements to it, like different, uh, you know, more sinew, more fat, more, or is it, is it kind of one, material that you're printing at a time. Can you talk talk us through what you're printing there? Yeah, so what we do is uh, we select the ingredients. Normally, as I mentioned, there is uh, the, the, you know, the liquid part is the water and the plant-based, the, the oils, right? The fat, plant-based yep. fats. We mix that in the mixture together with the protein extract. So it looks, it looks like a powder mixture and the liquid mixture. You do an emulsion, so you mix uh, the effect together with some parts to do emulsion. On the other side, you create this kind of protein mixture. And all together, you create one single element, one single product. Or if you want, you can have two separates. Uh, in one case, you can have some micro elements that are more resembling like uh, protein or the muscular fibers, and another one that is resembling the fat fibers. I'm not going to say fibers, the fat. Uh, part of it. So in this specific case, we have done a test with uh, the prototype with one single extruder. But as you can see, the machine has two space for two extruders on purpose, so that uh, you can see uh, that you can have a fat on one and um, on the other, so the protein-rich part of the other. 
You know, one of my favorite sh- uh, shows is a show called Upload, where they basically, it's 10 years in the future, and they print food like it's in a microwave, print a steak, and it takes like a minute. I'm curious, like, are, how when do we get to the point where this steak can be printed in like a fashion? Like, I'm, I'm sitting in a restaurant at a table, and I order one, and you can print it on demand. Can you get to the point where it's ever going to be printed in, you know, really quickly, like a couple minutes? Um, or, or is it, And if that's the case, does that ever go into the home? Do you see that happening in the home space? Yeah, our strategy is to go first uh, into the restaurants and to do it as fast as possible. So the times that is uh, good and necessary for uh, to work in a restaurant, right? You need to be fast. So this is the first step. Um, we want to not only increase the speed, but we want to have uh, this kind of future of uh, restaurant, create some kind of collaboration in which we select the restaurants, people can go there and select their own, you know, ingredients, what they want from a menu or a list, or even you know, on an iPad, select what is what they're missing from personalized nutrition and transform that into um, their own their own products, right? And uh, what's happening is that we believe that it will come before seeing this machine in the homes. Uh, we think that we will really also happen in the next few years if we see these machines in some uh, in some kitchens, uh, home kitchens. But I think that in our strategies, first we want to create a premium version of it. Think about the Tesla Roadster, right? We want to create first a Ferrari or a Tesla Roadster, something that is super cool, su- superior to the actual meat that we are trying to buy or imitate, right? But we don't want to just create uh, something that is uh, similar or, you know, we, everybody wants to show that you can be superior of what you are trying to uh, imitate. And in this specific case, we have the possibility, the uh, same strategy as impossible tools, right? Go day after day to improve it, Work with top chefs, as I mentioned, one of the in a group of uh, one of the best uh, ten top chefs in the world, and work with them to create something that is superior in terms of texture, taste, appearance, and nutritional properties, so that you can find this uh, wheel uh, to uh, be able to show this uh, in some selected restaurant, restaurants before half of 2021 here in uh, in Europe and first uh, we think in Spain. Uh, Kim Anderson asks. Uh... How does food safety compare to traditional meat? And what she's getting at is, can you eat it? Does it need to be refrigerated? Uh, can you eat it raw? Or is it is, is not... Talk a little bit how it compares to regular meat in terms of like food safety. Yeah. Uh, this first, there is no novel ingredients. Very important. So that you don't need to stay uh, behind the regulations and spend many years on that. You are able to be flexible. And this is one of the advantages. We have done some tests on pasteurization, high pressures, and, uh, and sterilization to be able to check if it was uh, safe and you could keep it in the fridge for a long time, we have seen that it stays for more than one month in the fridge after pasteurization and after high pressures. So compared to meat normally, because it doesn't have uh, because uh, it doesn't have the risk of getting certain typical bacteria of meat, it's safer. Of course, it doesn't have antibiotics, ex- estrogen, uh, cholesterol, etc. But also in terms of safety, um, you can eat it raw without the risk of uh, getting sick. Um, and we have eaten in this row uh, today with the uh, top chef at the uh, restaurant this Rotar, and uh, it looks like meat before cooking and after cooking, specifically the texture, is our main advantage, I would say. Well, this has been really awesome. Like, I, I think it's great to actually see this in practice because we hear about it and we read about you in the news um, and to actually see you printing meat uh, and doing this for us. It's been really educational for me. Um, if I were to actually want to eat a meat, a steak printed by Nova Meat, where would I be able to go and do that now? Um, and when will I be able to do it in my in the U.S., for example? Is that, are you guys planning to work with a high-end chef here? Yes. What we are doing is that, uh, of course, now the situation is a bit strange, but we have received, not only investors, we have received chefs, many journalists, uh, curious people at conferences. So the easiest way is to attend to some of the conferences that we are organizing uh, the next few months whenever we can do it presentially or uh, if you want to know us better you can come to Barcelona of course let us know in advance we need to check if it's possible because every day is different here the rules in Europe you need to say you need to tell the people that are coming here that they can be uh, every day can be different um, so uh, what we can say is that if you write on novaweek.com to our team you will be able to uh, organize with us a visit and actually, we are organizing the next round of investment. So happy to discuss. If you write to us at investmentnovamic.com, you can learn about uh, our technology in depth. 
Well, Giuseppe, thank you so much. We will drop your your domain name, your website into the chat here so people could find more about you and, and they can and feel free to put other information if you want people to get a hold of you. Uh, but this has been great. I appreciate you doing this. Um, and thank you so much, man. Thank you very much, Mike. It's been a pleasure. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. And folks, we're, we're taking a 40-minute break. Check out the sponsors. Uh, run to the expo. Uh, check out what the vendors are showing. There's a lot of cool stuff. And uh, we'll see you uh, in a little bit. Bye, guys.